Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the dispersion. Here I've got another Nazarene Israelite who's in that dispersion, a fellow we heard from a couple months ago, Jesse Miller, one of my good buds from going way back, and he has been on the road for the Almighty Sovereign just since we talked last, maybe six weeks ago or so. And so tell me, Jesse, where were you and where did you end up in the last six weeks or so? Refresh our memory. Oh, boy, uh, I was in Kansas the last time and uh, ventured off to Texas for a period of time to, uh, well, I was hoping to get established with a community there that was Messianic Observant, uh, Hebrew roots, however you want to term that, in Texas. And so I did, I spent some time there, um, ministered to some people there, developed some pretty good relationships there. And uh, there for about three weeks, I was thinking I was going to be there a little bit longer. Um, but uh, the father had other plans on that. Um, and so I did make some very important connections while I was there. And I did confirm some things for some of the believers there that where they needed to see things. The father used me to shed some light on the situ some of the issues going on there. So that was good. And uh, then I ventured on over to Montana. So now I'm out up here near the base of uh, the Glacier Mountain Range. If it were daytime, I'd point my phone out the window here and let you see it. So, but Take um, pictures and let us see them. That'd be great. Well, uh, yeah. you found almost a good like friend. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. You found a great <laughs> friend over there in Texas, a guy that I recently became acquainted with. I won't mention his name, but. I haven't met him in person, but what, what, as I've talked to him, he is a great guy. Now, why do I bring this up, not mentioning his name, just to let you know that there are some people out there yeah. that are wonderful people still. If you have lost your faith, there are still some out there. you got to go find them, though, and I think maybe you found one. I sure did. Uh, I'm tempted to say his name because he's a dear brother and he really is. He's solid. It was, he was a gemstone found out in the middle of the wilderness. He really was. And he's steadfast and pursuing the father and sticking to the truth. And, you know, what's so beautiful about him is I, I think that he's might be in his early seventies, maybe even really? I think last year, early, late sixties at the, at the very youngest. And, his, and he's still pliable. He's still like, he's still open hearted to learning new truth. He's not cemented in his ways in terms of a traditional thinking. He's, which is really beautiful. He's, he's retained a, a, a childlike wonder and awe towards the things of Yahweh. Don't and, you love people like that? They are yeah. few far between. And he's in like 70 years old. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. So you stopped by there, you gave a lesson, you learned a lesson, you did some ministry, and then you took off for the North Country again. Yeah. How cold is it there today? Yeah. It's been pretty mild, actually. Uh, it did get down to, I don't know, maybe 20 degrees for the load today, but it was 40 degrees. Oh, not so, bad. I wish it was that bad. here. So yeah. what have you lost? since the last time we talked because you look a lot different now <laughs> i don't know the military or anything let me think about it a minute <laughs> yeah well i i ended i ended up going through a process to get my independent contractor's license here in montana so i could make myself available to a variety of different types of work mm -hmm. as a handyman and uh and just to, which I didn't need to, I don't know, maybe it was the, maybe it was the spirit, the Ruach who prompted me, but I just decided it's, I don't know how many years it's been. I have had a beard for quite some time and yeah. decided to clean it up for a minute. My little girl wasn't too happy about it, but my, my son said, daddy, you look funny. I'm so, I'm so glad you think so, son. <laughs> Did your little girl even know you? I mean, I don't think since she's been born that she's ever seen you without a beard. She hasn't, no, no. So we'll we'll probably grow it back for her, but uh, yeah, now I, it's short. So 
Aren't you concerned about some of these Hebrew roots people uh, telling you you need to grow that beard back if you're going to be a man? You know, I got a lot of love, and uh, I don't know if that was a rhetorical question, but I'll answer yeah. it anyway. Okay. I, I have a lot of love for the people who are a part of that group, and I just, I pray for each and every one, you know. Uh, it, 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 they they kind of remind me of the Protestant denomination. You know, you you, you started off with, what is it, Luther, or I don't know, Zin, uh, Zinzendorf or somebody. I'm not sure who it was, but you no, know, was it? What's his name? Is another Z name? Anyhow, Zwingli. you know, Zwingli. Yes, Zwingli. yes. Okay. Right, Zwingli or something along the lines. I think he was from Sweden. He was part of the Swedish movement, and Luther was German, right? Pretty close. Any, any rate, you know, they started off with good intentions, maybe. And further on down the line, really not too far in terms of human history, you've got over 40,000 Protestant denominations and so much division. So oh, for sure, it, it's really the same thing. You know, I was reading on a, I was reading online. Someone was asking questions about whether or not they were allowed to fix their vehicle so that they could pay their bills and, and be able to go to work and, and take care of their family and their children. And their car was breaking down and they weren't sure if they could do it on Shabbat. And I said, you know, I told him, I said, go ahead and fix your donkey, you know, go with no condemnation, just take care of business, man. You know, it's about the way I understand it. He's the Elohim of life. Uh -oh. And, and, you know, and I think that's what, I think that's what Yahshua was trying to say too, that he's, he's the Adon or Adonai of Shabbat. He's the Lord of the Shabbat and that Shabbat was created for man not to keep man in bondage, mm -hmm. you know, but to liberate man, to give him a day of rest to, so that he could rejuvenate his soul. But if you got to do something to relieve somebody of stress and, and you have to, you have to help somebody because if you don't, it's going to create great amounts of trouble for them in their life and, and be, you know, increase the burden of somebody that you're called to love. You're supposed to go help them, even if it makes you tired. Everybody ought to be working on the Shabbat. I'll tell you why. Because if you're doing the works of your father, you're not prohibited from anything. That's what Torah is all about. That's what Shabbat is all about. If you're doing those kind of works, you can do them from night until the next morning. And that's what I think about the... The hardest work I do anymore these days is on the Shabbat. Mm -hmm. I work all day on Shabbat in ministry stuff. And what did Yahshua say about the Levites? They're free. From, they're free to work their ministry on the Shabbat. Somebody's yeah. got to do it. You find somebody with a car broken down, you should, maybe you should just say, uh, Nah, just sit there and suffer for the next 23 hours. <laughs> no, I can't touch it, Samaritan. Okay, well, I think you're absolutely right there. You know, the Essenes wrote in their documents that if a, if a donkey falls in a ditch on the Sabbath day, uh, you're worthy of death if you bring that donkey out. So oh my Joshua goodness. Joshua gave them a little um a little bit of a warning there saying something very contradictory to what they had in their law. Yeah. That of course you're going to get that animal out or anybody else that's suffering. I don't mean to say, you know, you got to go out and wash your windows or you need to go to that old ball game. I think that's sin. Right. But when you're genuinely working the works of Yahshua. I mean ministry act definitely that's the time yeah. to do it. Yeah. So yeah I, I I do I do pray for a lot of the folks who are involved in that movement. I I try to contribute as much as I can to because there's just so much bondage theology, you know, and, and and I think a lot of the people are doing their best and I would never advise to eat pork. Nope. I don't know. Maybe that's where that's where I draw the line. I, you gotta, I guess you got to draw the line somewhere. But 
if you were called to ministry somewhere and somebody offered some food to an idol and they wanted you to eat food with them and it was the most important whatever it was that they were offering to you that, that their particular culture appreciated and and it was your opportunity to disseminate the truth to a group of people who'd never heard it before living in complete gross darkness mm -hmm. are you going to offend them exactly this happened to me several years ago i was i played a uh, keyboards in a church now. That's my job, besides this stuff. Um, and she invited me over, an older lady, to eat. She knew I was Torah observant, but she offered fish with crab meat in it. And about halfway through it, she said, oh, that's crab meat, isn't it? You don't eat that. I said, tonight I eat. That would be the last thing I want to do to offend that little woman yeah. by my own legalism. But, of yeah. course, we're going to avoid that in other situations. Sure, yeah. So where are you now? I mean, precisely, where are you staying? What are you doing? How are your babies? Children are doing okay. Um they're with me part-time with their mother part-time um and uh, but they're doing good i had i have the majority of the time right now and i've been working with a really good man here in town who runs a, a granite slab uh countertop manufacturing business and so uh he's he's hired me on to do some handyman work and i just mainly carpentry um, a little bit of remodeling within his shop and um, and he was going to hire me on for for the actual cutting and polishing of the granite for uh, the different orders that he's getting but I think he's going to sell his business I think he's he's at the end of it and he's pretty tired and I think he wants to move on to manufacturing uh, some uh, some coffee kind of like what you're doing with the yeah. with the tea <laughs> well, or the we were the, doing that that's yeah. We all we got left of it is the commercials I put on once in a while. But yeah. Uh, are you? Do you feel lucky? I mean, you must be the luckiest guy around to be able to drive to Texas and find something to do, and drive clear up to Montana and fall into a job. And and what's been going on the last uh, four or five six years? I mean, you're you're working you're ministering you are not ready to jump out of the fourth floor of a building <laughs> it seems like if you do you're going to land safely on your feet <laughs> now, am i wrong there or am i just exaggerating well you shall not tempt yahweh your elohim right uh, that that was the last temptation of hasatan that was recorded as commit suicide Yahshua mm -hmm. and you know when it came down to it it's just not an option um yeah I I don't I wouldn't say lucky I would say that I, I'm definitely Baruch of Yah or blessed he he has allowed me to do a lot of traveling uh, which which normally is a very difficult thing for people these days who are of low means which I am I'm very low means so um it's pretty phenomenal I've been able to travel as much as I have and he has shown me some favor and i don't know i i wonder i really wonder if it has something to do with pro my bloodline because i do believe that we're that that there there was a curse i think i got the years wrong on it and it's in it's in ezekiel and i think there's a couple other places or a kizikel um where there's a 2730 year curse for the northern tribes or ephraim and then <clears throat> there was a renewing curse that kept happening with yehuda I think it was only a 600 year curse. I could be off on that. I might have to look that up. But they kept they kept stumbling and sinning and offending Yah. So the curse kept renewing up until the point, I guess, around not too long ago, maybe even a decade ago. And all of a sudden you started seeing people passionately seeking the father about what whose calendar is right. What I got to all of a sudden find out the calendar I know is going on before that, but it just really caught fire in a way I, I'd never witnessed myself before. 
it may, a little bit more than a, than a decade ago. And then, uh, and then his name. It's still hot. Let me tell you, it's still yeah. hot. The and then, in, you know, I believe Yahshua will clear that up when he's, when Yahweh Tzavayod is established again and the Malek Tzadik, righteous king is, 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 which I believe there will be a physical presence on the earth during the millennial reign. And as scripture says that he'll command the dignitaries and nations of the world to observe Sukkot. And so if, if you don't have your calendar right by then, he'll make sure that you know the, the correct calendar. So, but uh, you know, just so many other things, the name, all of a sudden his name, his language, and uh, and then and then recognizing the true covenant, you know, it's like okay, so we're all. It's like going back to the roots of 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 our belief um, that that's Hebrew in origin, all the way back to Abraham, Yitzchak, and, and Yaakov. Absolutely, absolutely, we're grafted into that line. I don't care what Jewish people say about us; we're grafted into that line from the testimony of their own book. I'm wondering if you would consider uh, reminding us about the Malachans. Okay, yeah. While you're at it, tell us a little bit about that again and, and how you fit into that. Sure. Well, my, my suspicion is that it's actually, I, and I don't know if it's of the tribe of Yehuda. I wonder if it is. I don't know for a hundred percent. It's hard for me to say dis distinctly. Think of that but, word Malak, Malak. Right, Molokan. Yeah, that's true. Phonetically, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah, there's a phonetic connection there. Whether it means yeah. anything or not, it probably does. Yeah, in Russian, it means milkmen. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it, they, that they were termed that uh, that name is because they well they were also called called old spiritual christians because mm -hmm. everyone else at that time in in that region turkey russia uh, along uh, mount ararat uh, the base of mount ararat and up and down the silk road and Ar armenia romania a, a lot of different areas where um they had ended up settling uh, thereafter um they were termed they were termed molokan because uh, there was that oh go ahead no, I was saying milkmen. Yes, I yeah, right. that now. Yeah, we covered that. Mm -hmm. So, but but that's interesting what you say about phonetics because I do believe that there's something to that, and no matter what language it is, there there there's a, an a, original phonetic pronunciation. I think ties back to the ancient language of Yah, mm -hmm. uh, especially with names. Okay, I'm going to ask you a name question. Uh, you know. I saw on the, a big sign on a supermarket. It said BOGO. The only thing I knew about BOGO was that's the name of the Russian God, Russian for God. And I thought, what's in this supermarket here? BOGO? Why is this on here? Well, it's buy one, get one. <laughs> I wonder if there's any connection between BOGO in Russian and Slavic nations and buy one get one yeah well you would probably know being a linguist a little bit more than me you on know. that but i think you're on to something because there's a lot of words in the english that are that way like uh you know i hate to say it but in star wars yoda you know has this name and if you look it up yada is knowledge it's it's like dot it's like to know something mm -hmm. but here's this master is well all-knowing master you know and his name is Hebrew in origin. Yeah. So I think that's that's I think that's intentional. There's a lot of people who uh, who have been of great wealth for quite some time, who have played a huge role of influence in implementing a lot of Hebrew uh, words phonetically and masking masking definitions, but still promoting these names and and the and the American culture. And there's actually evidence of at least two or three times too, where Hebrew may almost became the national language here. So yes, it did. One vote, one vote off. Well, you know yeah. one thing that I do. I wrote a course on uh, uh, transliterated Hebrew for people that don't want to try to get the hump of the Hebrew alphabet, and it's called Katamatya. It's the Gospel of Matthew, where you start out. 
and a few words are replacing the English words with the Hebrew transliterated words. By the time you get to the end of the book, you've got nearly all the words are in Hebrew transliterated. Mm -hmm. And since I did that, if you go through that with the with the uh, with the audio and the book, you're going to get through it with about 150, 160 transliterated Hebrew words. You're going to app, you're going to be able to speak the language. I'm not putting I'm not putting a plug for this. I'm just saying right. in the studies it took to do that back 10, 12 years ago when I wrote the thing. Wow, I was astounded at how the Hebrew pronunciated pronounced words were um well what should I say comparable to a lot of similar words in a lot of different languages. Look at Shabbat, for instance. How do we know Sabbath in ancient Judaism was on what we call Saturday? Look at the linguistics down. You can go in the ling linguistics back probably to 300 BC and to find uh, variations of Shabbat in all these languages for Saturday, it's astounding. So many of these uh, things are, are adding up. So when you first said Malachon last time, mm -hmm. that would be, that would be a, a, a plural. If we had Malach and then we had O-N is a, a Hebrew suffix for plural, we're talking about what we would call angels. And hmm. that word is found in literature. It's found in the war of the worlds. It's found in numerous late movies. There's a one movie where a spaceship comes down on a planet and every, everything on the planet is alive. I can't remember the name of it. I saw it once, but they use all kinds of Hebrew words and names for different clans and people with maybe one or two letters changed. Right. It's a whole, I wish I could remember, it's a whole story of mm. the Jewish wars with, right. with uh, Hollywood uh, GUI. Right. Graphic. All right, I'm going to shut up. Shut up, Dad. Well, <laughs> well to, to answer your question, though, in terms of how I've been able to get around uh, I, and, and even how the fathers just because I've been tested. I mean, my faith has been tested the utmost. It really has. Um, I mean, there's been times where I completely just turned my back and shut the Bible on the father. And you know, well, not entirely, but shut the Bible is just disgusted with the system and the religion sure. and everything. And he, he returned me. Uh, I remember at one point I was in, I, I had gone a whole year and I, and I was studying Jewish mysticism because I, I knew, I knew there was something to the Hebrew concept of the creator, but you know, just the Christian church and the expression of it just was not doing it for me. It was really, I couldn't even say God anymore. Jesus. I mean, I oh. felt like I was using everything. Sure. And this was before I didn't know anything about Hebrew roots or anything. I just couldn't just really bothered me. I was like really irritated by it to the point where I used to, I used to be a man of prayer up until that point. And this was quite some time ago, probably, like, I don't know, maybe 15, yeah, about maybe about 12 years ago. Uh, 2007, I would say. Um, but I, I just, I, I, I was just, I couldn't even hardly pray. Because I couldn't say God, I just it just seemed like it interrupted everything for me. But uh, I I went to this one little gathering, and there was this kid who was going to a university, and he was studying linguistics, and and he was specifically uh, targeting Hebrew as one of his studies, and he was a pretty outstanding young man in terms of his character, and uh, just really thorough, and I appreciated him mainly because of his character. And so I was encouraged to go to this, this Bible study and I went a couple of times and was just kind of sitting in the outskirts and just listening. And, 
you know, I knew, I knew the dialogue. I knew, I knew I'd spent enough time in scripture. I knew what was, what was being shared and so forth. And, but then it was about the second or third uh, time that I went and it, they were doing that. They were doing a Passover theme where we just had some candles lit and, uh, and they were playing soft music on the guitar, just some soft worship music. And we were, we were reading through in the best row, um, the stages up until Yahshua's uh, offering of him, of his own life on the, on the stake or the tree. What happened? And um, we had, we had this table set up for the elements. And if, you know, anyone who showed up, we were just, they were encouraged, like, if you feel led and you, you know, to go and take elements, anyone was free to get up and do that. So at one point I stood up and I said, well, I'm going to go take the elements. And I stood there and it was just, it was, kind of, I hadn't been praying a whole lot or anything. And I just stood there and I said, well, God, creator, whoever you are. If this, if this Messiah is true, if he's right, and this is actually, and this can be confirmed, then please confirm it now. Because otherwise, I, I just don't know. And this is just a little bit of wine and a piece of bread. It ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. And so that was about as half hard as my prayer was. It was still genuine, but I, I did. I took the elements, and the Ruach HaKodesh fell on me in a way Ooh. that I can't even express. Just, just, uh, just demolished me, and I couldn't breathe. And I couldn't stop crying and I was overwhelmed. And my friend who brought me, I, I, I told him, I said, we have to leave. We have to leave because I couldn't communicate. I was, I was completely overwhelmed. And what, what I, I sensed that the father or the Ruach was communicating to me is that it was that regardless of my, the sin that I committed, regardless of, of, of however far I distanced myself from the creator due to my own poor choices at that time in my life that his love surpassed that and that he loved me in spite of me. And he kept ramming that down my, he kept impressing that deeply into my heart in such a way that I, I was just overwhelmed. I was, I was a mess for at least two hours and it just, I couldn't think of anything else. It was like, he took over my mind, took over my thoughts and he was like, it was like heaven's download into my mind. And so <clears throat> that's one of those instances where, you know, my faith was, was really, really tested up to that point. And he completely confirmed his love for me. And, you know, it's a step-by-step -step process uh, being sanctified and really learning how to implement Torah being branded and written upon our hearts and our lives in a very practical sense. But uh, he's an Elohim of, of, of grace. He's very patient, you know, so long as people are, are honest in their pursuit and they're doing, they're doing their best. I mean, there's a, a righteous man stumbles seven times that he gets back up again. You right. know, he's not aiming necessarily that you, that you are absolutely perfect now that you figured out that his name is Yode Vavhe. Okay, if you don't do everything else now exactly right, I'm going to smash you with a hammer. <laughs> You know, it's just one, one step at a time. Um, so I, I, I don't know what it is. I think there's something to do with bloodlines. There's something to do with the curse being uh, completed. <clears throat> there's something to do with the identity of the remnant children of Yaakov returning to the tribes of, Yash of Yisrael. And I, I, I believe that somehow my bloodline is, a trip, is somehow connected to that. I, I, and he's spoken to me a little bit about that on a personal level. I guess I won't say more than that, but I think that's why he's preserved me and he's allowed me to be able to travel as I have and why he's imbued me with certain gifts that even though I go, I go through the ringer and the fire and get smashed all the time and get tested all the time, he keeps raising me back up. I'm like, you're right. Yeah, I probably would stand back up after falling four mm -hmm. flights of you know down to the ground i probably would stand back up and be like okay maybe we are in the millennium you know if you really believe you have eternal life then you know if you really really believe it i think that if people did they they would they would change dramatically the way that they lived and then some of the challenges Absolutely. That many of us face um, 
we would view them a lot differently. It'd be like, well, okay, whether it's five years, 10 years, 20 years, I got to deal with this thing. I'm living forever. So whatever, let's get to it. <laughs> well, another thing in there, um, people try to plead the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Where is it? Floating around here someplace? No, it's on the table. This is my blood of the new covenant. This is my body. Uh, you're talking about the, the influence of the real presence. Mm -hmm. When you took that, you did it in faith, and you experienced the real presence to the point where you probably could barely stand up. Yeah. If you were a selfish man, and a, a, a thinking at that time, you could have probably gotten anything you wanted at that particular time because of that. But that's not what you wanted. You did a, a new metanoia, a new turning about. And yeah. uh, I have, I have uh, stories about that. I'll save them. We're doing a communion online. We're going to try it first Shabbat of every month at 11 o'clock a.m., uh, more on that perhaps later, but this is something that's got to be done. It's yeah. got to be done. Nobody's taking in anymore. So many Hebrew roots groups say, oh, we do that once a year. That's not what we're to do. He said, whenever you take it, do this in the remembrance or for the remembrance of me. Yeah. Listen, brother, my time is up. And we got to go, but I want to ask you to come back in another month so we can get an updated report. This is really fun. You are a nice I'll reader. be then. <laughs> yeah, well, you'll be someplace. You'll probably even be down here enjoying some warm weather. Maybe. Who knows? Y'all will and y'all knows. Thank yeah. you, brother. All right. Well, shalom aleichem. Be blessed. And to you, sir.